Record. Uh, CTO Challenge 2018. Now, um, I, I'm, I have a reduced number of duties this time, which I'm glad of, uh, but one of them is to explain what the heck we're up to here, and uh, that is that over time, this has evolved. And uh, thanks to David Morris, we went all the way back to the very first CTO Challenge, uh, and he found a film for me, and it, I had forgotten about this. Um, it, we began this as the CTO Roundup back in 2003, I think, four, and um, it was Craig Mundy from Microsoft who was complaining to me uh, that there weren't enough fun things for the, you know, really good things to do, active things to do on stage at FIRE for CTO. All these CTOs in the audience. And I said, okay, I'm listening. And then at the same time, David Brin uh, had just done a, a pilot project uh, in New York of, of TV shows that were a lot like this. And he set up the first actual drama uh, that became the uh, CTO Design Challenge. So uh, it's evolved now uh, over all these years. And uh, as you all know, in 2015, for the first time, we actually built a company on stage, which became Pattern Computer. And this year, uh, we were thinking about, now what do we do? I always want to do something a little bit better. And uh, we were well aware of Khan's work. And Khan's been to fire many times, I think. And so um, and, and we were trying to help him figure out what to do with Zuolingua, his beautiful name for his company. And it all kind of came together. So the idea of, of creating a company uh, on stage is a pretty interesting idea. And we asked Khan if he would be interested in Zoolingua being the subject of this next experiment. And he said, yes. yes. <laughs> so with Khan's permission, that's what we're here for. Uh, so this is different from any other uh, challenge we've ever done, which I think is great too. And it's particularly different in the sense that Unlike past challenges where we've had a technical question usually to resolve, whether it's fighting urban wildfires or, or designing through pictorial processes or what is flow and so on, in, in this year's challenge, it's going to be a lot more about building a real company. We have a deep hope that the result of this won't just be a video uh, about all you guys being smart, but it will actually lead to something productive that will become a better, bigger, more successful Zolingua. Have I said that right? So yes, far? you did. All right. So I'm going to turn this over to Khan, uh, who has the uh, interesting role, which we custom designed this year. <laughs> uh, he he uh, originally just wanted to be part of the team, uh, since this is his company, basically. And um, I asked him if he would also be one of the three judges, uh, because it seemed to me that he is the person who will uh, prosper or fail by the result of all this and should be a judge, therefore. Uh, so he's, he's wearing two hats during this week. He'll be a part of the team, and he'll be a judge at the end. And we've also agreed that he'll be the last one to vote. So he doesn't get to control <laughs> the vote. Uh, if the vote's going sideways when it hits Khan, it's too late already. Uh, and should we do a little introduction of everybody? Yeah, uh, let's do let, that. Wait, let me yes. talk about the, my global vision yes. of Zuolingua. Okay. So let me tell you about my global vision for Zuolingua. Increasingly, we are finding that Scientific studies are showing that a number of animals have either language or language-like abilities. And I summarize a lot of this scientific information in my book, Chasing Dr. Doolittle. But we still know very little about these languages. We have groups like uh, SETI and METI who are trying to figure out how to communicate with aliens somewhere out there in space among the stars and yet we know very little about how to communicate with our resident aliens, the animals. So it is my hope that we can harness the power of AI technology and build translators to communicate with animals, first with dogs, then with cats, horses, uh, cows, and then maybe orcas, whales, elephants, all kinds of animals. And my hope is that what this will do is this will open up people's eyes to realize that animals are sentient thinking beings who have hopes and dreams of their own, and that we should look at animals as our partners rather than as chattel and property to be disposed of as we will. So my hope is that in the future, 
Just like we talk now about Googling something, in the future we will be talking about doing zoolinging our dog or zoolinging our cat to figure out what it is that our cat is saying. And why dogs? Dogs offer us a lot of possibilities because we know a lot about dog language from scientific studies. Also, 40% of American households have at least one dog. And the pet market is huge. So commercially, there's a lot of possibilities in this. So that's why I wanted to start with dogs and then expand to other animals once we figure out the technology. Now, what I would like to ask the team to do is to develop essentially a complete business plan for Zoolingua. First, the strategies for data collection and AI analysis. Second, the strategies for building a corporate team and attracting investors. Third, building strategies for marketing the products and communicating with the public in general. And as Mark mentioned, this has a dual purpose. One is that it provides Zoolingo with a complete roadmap of how to proceed, and the other is it shows you all of the elements that have to be combined into a startup, assuming the team is successful. So what I'd like to do right now is show you a very brief video that we designed for the general public, not for a tech audience, but at least you'll have a, a sense of what we're doing with Zoolingua. So if we can have the video. And hope Hi, oh, I'm Miss B. I may be small, but I have a huge personality. And this is my best friend. Her name is Catherine. She really gets me. She knows exactly what I like for dinner and what kind of treats I like best. She even knows that I love the cats that I live with. But there are some things that I just can't get her to understand, and I have a lot of wisdom that I can share with her. Wouldn't it be great if she understood what I was saying? Well, now I'm really happy, because I just made a new friend. Here he is. His name is Dr. Khan. He's a scientist, and he's going to help Catherine understand what I'm trying to say. Some people think that he is the real Dr. Doolittle. Dr. Khan spent 30 years of his career researching how animals communicate. And he is developing a translation app that lets humans understand what we dogs are saying. We currently have an amazing relationship with our dogs. And many people feel that they can communicate with their dogs very well. But a lot of times, they don't really understand completely what the dog is saying or they miss a lot of the specifics and so what this app is going to do is it will focus on these specific behaviors and tell people exactly what the dog is trying to communicate you see your dog trying to communicate to you so you pull out this app on your cell phone you push the recording button, it will take in the signals that the dog is putting out, upload this to the cloud where you will have artificial intelligence technology analyzing this, and then it will download to the app something like, I'm hungry. This is absolutely not a pie in the sky. AI can solve this problem, and it has solved many other problems that are very similar to it. Between Dr. Khan's research and combining that with this new power of artificial intelligence and machine learning systems, I have a high confidence that not only will this application ultimately work and be highly valuable, but I really believe it'll be finished within three years. I have to say, as somebody who studies dogs, we know a lot about what they think and what they feel and what they want and what they need. I think what makes Khan unique in developing this translational device is his vast experience studying animal communication. His work on prairie dogs is groundbreaking, and I know from talking with him and reading his books and papers that he knows a lot about how animals communicate with us. Just think, if our people could understand how we really feel, 
so many of us dogs would have better relationships with our humans, and some of us would not end up in shelters. If there was a way for us to tell humans what we need, the world would be a better place, and all of us dogs could find forever homes where we could live in harmony with our people. I can't wait to get Dr. Khan's app. We dogs have a lot to tell you humans. Please join me on this journey to helping us understand dogs and other animals. I want to thank you for your support along this adventure. So we should now, yeah. Uh, so I think we should ask who we have with us here on stage. Well, shouldn't we have Sharon come up briefly? Let's let's let let's introduce the people with us first. Okay, time. all right. Um, Chris, just gonna one by one. Chris Johnson. I'm a computer scientist at the University of Utah, um, with an expertise in data visualization, which is why I'm part of the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm uh, Dave Roberts. I'm a computer scientist by training. Uh, studied math and computer science at Colgate. Got my PhD from Georgia Tech from the College of Computing, uh, where I worked on what I called interactive virtual experiences, which is really just a fancy way of saying computer games, because when you're trying to get money from the federal government, if you call them computer games, they tend to reject your grant proposals. Uh, but uh, more generally, uh, I'm really fascinated in the relationship between behavior and computation and how one can help us understand the other better. Uh, and so in addition to the work that I do with humans and computer games, I've spent the last decade or so working on the design of both hardware and software uh, for interacting with animals using AI. I'm Roger Payne. I study whales. I uh, have spent my life in animal behavior and uh, neurophysiology. I think that the importance of being able to communicate in any way, small or large, with other animals is uh, central to our future because I feel that unless we recognize the importance of other species, we have no future. I'm Catherine O'Donnell. I work for Lifelong Medical Care as their Director of Development and Communications. I'm also the Marketing Communications Advisor for Zoolingua. I, I, before I started at Lifelong, I actually was in animal welfare for more than 15 years. So I know many of the people that we're going to be pitching for this product. So. I'm Gally Hagel, and um, in my previous life, for about 30 years, I was a corporate attorney with an international practice, and on the side I had a pro bono practice in animal law. And since I've stopped practicing law, I've gone um, full-time into animal advocacy. Um, I no longer practice law, and um, I have a special interest in interspecies communication and in the no-kill movement. I'm on the board of a, a no-kill shelter in the Bay Area. And so this um, project is just the perfect intersection for me. I'm Lorian Pratt. I'm a computer scientist. I started out my career inventing some of the early neural network uh, algorithms. I'm known for my work in uh, neural network transfer, defining that field. Over the last 35 years, I've deployed hundreds of applications, really specializing in taking AI technology out of the lab and into the field to be deployed in apps. Hello, my name is John Patoti, and I'm an active angel investor and, and mentor to startup companies. Uh, previously, I built a uh, IT services business, and when uh, it was brought to my attention uh, what this uh, CTO challenge was about, uh, there's hardly anything I could think of that was more fascinating. So we'll see if uh, we can figure out a way to build a business out of it. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Godsey. And I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've had the uh, great pleasure to, to build many, many companies. And so I'm here to hopefully help in that regard. Uh, I could probably describe things in a very fancy way, but I think at heart I'm a nurturer and, and love to watch things grow, love to work with people. And uh, not unlike what Roger said, I think this is incredibly important, not only in terms of understanding animals, but I think it also reflects back and puts us in our place relative to you know all of the creatures so i think i think this will be a great great exercise thank you uh greg ness and i was going to say cereal startup drunky but since you already said cereal he means wheaties and uh, 
Chex Mix and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm talking about that. But uh, 10 startups in 20 years, uh, seven exits in Silicon Valley, and uh, they talked to me about this a week ago, a week and a half ago. It just sounded like an awesome team to uh, work with. So um, mostly focused on the marketing side. Um, so renaissance person, not a deep technologist by any means. So I think you have a pretty cool team here. I think so too. Yeah, lots Superb of Superb people. Pond. Yep, yep. Now I understand that there is a mystery guest. Is that true? That is true. There is a mystery guest. There are actually uh, two mystery guests. Do you think this is the right time for us to, to I, bring them out? I think this is a wonderful Let's time. Let's bring out the mystery guests. Let's bring them out. Mystery guests. Mystery guests. This is Aria. Aria likes to say hello to everybody. And Hi, Aria. Aria is a rescue. For one year, she's been out of, of, uh, of the shelter. And Khan, I don't know if you'd like for me to tell you about her or want to with me, Aria. What she was like and what she's like now. Aria, can you sit? Can, Aria, oh, she wants to say hello to Greg. So Sharon, <laughs> tell us a story. So uh, a friend of ours, Tom Thomas, um, was um, looking for another dog before his elderly dog passed. And I uh, suggested that we go to a rescue shelter. And we went to this rescue shelter. It's a Nuzzles farm. And we saw Aria. And she was attached to one of the workers there. She saw us coming. And she had just come into the system. And she was holding on to his waist and her head was in his, underneath his arm, and she wouldn't look at anybody. And we saw something in her that was so special, by the way she looked at, in eyes and, and looked so much for appreciation and uh, acceptance. Um, I, it, it was a real gamble, because she was shaking. She didn't want anything to do with us. She wanted to stay with that man who would never be able to take her home. And we really literally dragged her out of there. And she had major behavioral problems. Hey, Aria, can you sit? Sit down. Thank you. She, had maybe, uh, she would shake. She couldn't see anybody. She would pee the minute she saw anyone. Uh, she couldn't eat. Uh, she ate Tom's <laughs> Range Rover's seat. All of it. Um, <laughs> and, and messed all over and was afraid of people, and was terrified, and we didn't know what to do with her. And what we ended up doing was just giving her and pouring love into her, and she's turned into one of the most beautiful dogs uh, that I've ever known, and I'm proud to be her mom. And we co-share, and, um, and Aria today is a very happy girl because we gave her a chance to express herself and to try to learn what she was saying to us and to give her the confidence to become a really good girl and a really good dog. And, and your thought here is that if you'd had the finished product from Zulingua, um, your work with Aria would have been easier. Much easier. Yeah. Much easier. Instead of guessing at why, every time we raised a hand to go get a coffee cup, she would cringe, she would go to the floor and she would yeah. pee. Um, if we would have known uh, what she needed, you know, and she was aggressive as well. Um, we could have dealt with her much, much better for, on an independent, individual basis on, on training. And today, you know, have you seen anything cuter? <laughs> and, and so she's so social. She never liked people. She never liked dogs. And, um, and she loves being at fire this year. Okay, so Aria is our mascot, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Exhibit A. Yeah. Does she want Thank Aria, you, have a seat for the photo. Aria, sit. Thanks, Sharon. Sit. Good girl. Okay. Uh, so would you, Khan, would you like to explain to the team, I know they've already kind of started, but would you explain to the team and the audience what your charge is for them? How do they succeed? Sure. The charge that I have is threefold. Uh, one, as I mentioned, is develop strategies for collecting data about dog body language, about dog vocalizations, and figure out how to do the AI analysis. So the success here 
is coming up with those strategies, coming up with specific ways that we can efficiently do all of this, not just go all over the map, but zero in on very specific strategies that we can use to develop this kind of analysis. My charge to the, um, uh, to the business and investing and legal team, part of our, our challenge here, is to develop strategies for how we can build an organizational team for the company, how we can develop legal strategies that would position the company into correct legal land, and how we can have strategies that would attract investors to the business. And then my challenge to the uh, marketing and social media team is to develop specific strategies for marketing the products that we can come up with that we envision for Zulingua and for uh, also developing social media strategies to communicate with the public, to let the public find out what it is that we're doing and get essentially broad community involvement in the work that Zulingua is doing. So the, for the business team then, as I mentioned, the specific strategies are coming up with a, a series of points, actions, strategies that Zulingua can use right out of the box for the legal investing and corporate structure. And what about the AI team? For the AI team, essentially, uh, they have to come up with specific ways of doing the AI analysis in the most efficient way possible, uh, giving us what techniques that they foresee would be useful for this kind of analysis and what sort of timeline we're looking at for applying these techniques. Okay, and we uh, should allow the judges to introduce themselves as well. I don't know if you guys have microphones, do you? That, oh, that's on. Hi, I'm uh, Bill Seward. Is that on? I mean, so. Mic on? No. Is there an on off switch? promising. Yep. Um, so I'm Bill Seward, uh, CEO today of Titan Seal, a serial entrepreneur like Greg. Um, raised $38 million uh, over multiple rounds for one of my uh, early stage companies. Uh, so I'm also an investor. Uh, so looking at this from different dimensions in terms of building businesses as well as raising money and you know future exit strategies and so forth. And I'm Adam Hetnarski. I run Tech Media Telecom Investing at Vulcan Capital, which is Paul Allen's uh, investment arm. So I work for Paul. Um, and so uh, around the world, I evaluate tech media and telecom and a lot of CTOs and, and uh, evaluate whether uh, the team or we can put together a team to bring a product to market and make it profitable. Um, and at Vulcan, we've uh, done big and small. We've invested in such areas as crypto batteries and cement uh, we actually have started actually our own coin um, that, well, we funded a coin to start and we built out the team uh, to bigger investments. Um, and we were a significant investor in such companies as uh, Uber, Spotify, and Flipkart. Thank you. And then I think we're going to be out of time here pretty quickly. Would you like to have any questions from the team? Do you guys have questions that you'd like to ask? Uh, in public, at least, um, about this challenge. They've already been working on this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just thinking, listen, into about uh, the interspecies uh, communication that a potential spinoff of this, if this actually works, we could have a version of the app that could perhaps communicate to teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be harder, I think. But <laughs> noble, a noble idea. <laughs> actually, I, I should comment uh, one of the things that we've discussed already among our team is that once we develop this technology, it could also be applied to uh, people who have autistic problems mm -hmm. and cannot verbalize. It can also be applied to pre-verbal kids. Uh, so 
there's a lot of potential for that. I don't think we can develop anything for teenagers. I think that's completely <laughs> hopeless. Well, well, and we have maybe time for one question. If you want to, anyone in the audience wants a question. I think we're not having that happen. All right, well, we're good to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pepper. I'm CEO of Ibis. I just spent the last five years building that company up to a point where we have a chance at, at success and uh, I've been doing this for a long, long time. So the question I, I've always had for Calm, which I think that obviously you guys probably have been thinking about already, but uh, it, when it comes to getting investments and building a successful company, it always comes down to what is the value proposition? And I've always had a difficult time um, figuring out what that value proposition is here. I think that I've got some ideas I'd be happy to talk about over bourbon tonight, but um, I think that's the, the key. I mean, you've got this amazing uh, technology. I wanna be able to talk to my dog, or she wants to talk to me, I think, but um, you know, how are you gonna make money is the, the crux of the matter. Right. So. I assume the business group will be Pay attention to that well, now, at least. If you, but if you want to grab me for a few hours, I'd be happy. Okay, to Okay, good, confirm. good. Well, I sh we should also add, anyone who wants to work with this group, it's not limited to the first 40 people on stage. So <laughs> uh, it's, it's open, and it's up to, I guess, each of them if they want to you know, have you in the group. But uh, we usually pick up a number of people who are added to the group during the week. So feel free to join. Uh, it's, a, it's an open invitation. Uh, Mark Gatzi? Yes. I was just going to add one point. Um, some, of, some of you may not be aware of this. I wasn't aware of it until recently, but there was a lady in Australia whose last name is Dunstan uh, who uh, had a photo photographic memory for sounds. And she had a child, and she noticed that there were five unique sounds that the, that the child um, you know, came up with. And she eventually connected them to behavior. And from that, discovered this baby language and went on to study another 800 babies with mothers and with 100% success and went on to write a book and was on Oprah and for young mothers it's really a go-to book huh. uh, in terms of understanding a baby and so I think there's tremendous merit in in obviously what Khan is doing and uh, you know the dogs can you know, uh, same or, uh, German Shepherds are, are good for about 60 commands. Uh, good trained horses, top horses, are good for about 60 commands, the dressage riders. Um, so I think, there's, I think we're going to discover a lot through this process. Anyway, I, thank I you. I do too. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's probably worth mentioning from our past work with Khan, if, for those people who haven't been here before or haven't met you, um, from a science perspective, the reason I'm excited about this project is having spent a, a large part of my life interested in, in whales and their sounds and how, how much incredible difficulty human beings have had with that. Um, and being a trained biologist at one point, you see that the history of, of the attempts at interspecies interpretation is littered with uh, humans trying to teach animals to speak English, which is the dumbest damn thing I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. So um, it's been so refreshing to have Khan show up show up for us uh, with a completely different attitude and, and approach whereby he used computers to uh, assess was there content in the signal. I don't have to teach them English. They don't have to teach me Spanish. And then what type of information was there? And there, you're, you got it right there. So um, there is great reason, I think, for success in this from a science perspective. We've, we've hit our, uh, our mark, and I wish you all the very best over the next few days. We will see you on Friday morning and wish them the best. <laughs>